This week on The Droids, we're back to talk about Harrison Ford and his latest injury on the set of a film, Leslie Headland, and the news about her upcoming Star Wars series, Acolyte, little background on her, plus Light of the Jedi, The High Republic, the final chapters of The Light of the Jedi, all that and so much more on The Droids. <laughs> Welcome back to the Droids. You're looking for a Star Wars podcast alongside Chris and Ryan. I am Mike, and finally we are back, fellas. Ooh. We've had we've had just wow. a whirlwind adventure. Sometimes you get lot. stuck out yeah. in the Kessel Run, and you just don't make it back. Some of us take well, twelve parsecs. Some of us take a hundred and seventy parsecs. That's true. And you know what? Starting a jizz band isn't easy. I've been devoting <laughs> Never a lot of been. time to it. Been <laughs> devoting a lot of time. It's to really it. hard in a pandemic. It's really hard. To get, to the, get the wind instruments yeah, going, exactly. you, gotta, get you, the know, whole, you have to check vaccination yeah. oh, yeah. statuses. Mm-hmm. And do the whole Zoom syncing thing just doesn't work. So you're not getting gigs. Yeah. You're, not you're getting all gigs. playing half a beat behind. <laughs> exactly. It's really hard. <laughs> I don't want to make Jabba angry. <laughs> well, um, we, it's, we, you know, it's, been, it's, a, it's the summer, boys. Yeah. In the, in the words of the band New Found Glory, I knew when you would come back, it's been a summer. Uh-huh. Um, that was for an audience of one, and that one is me. <laughs> Um, so when I listen to this later, I'll be tickled pink by it. But, Very good. Um, Who so, said that? Oh, that was me. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we're officially in summer now. It, yeah. You know, it, dates wise. I mean, it's been a sweaty. It's been a sweaty month here in New York yes. City. I'll tell the you, sweating has happened. <laughs> I'm so afraid I'm going to end up on like a the New York Post front page and man <laughs> melts <laughs> in Brooklyn. Man dissipates into air, becomes cloud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well you know <laughs> Listen, that'll do it from us the... everybody <laughs> this is it. you waited weeks and this was what we came back with we've been waiting on bated breath we know you canceled um, plans you said oh no this gosh. is the week they're back <laughs> please, please just as a disclaimer don't ever cancel plans for this podcast i know we all got vaccinated for it but grandma's birthday is gonna have to wait the droids are back this week i know it yeah Chris, you do have to cancel plans when we go live. You know, oh, that's like, true. Like, don't yeah. undercut the, our ability to drive that people to our live Hey, shows. you know what? Hey, I'll tell you what, though. If you do want to hear that, those are up on our YouTube page. And Mike said it. We will indeed drive you to our live shows mm-hmm. if, if you need a ride. <laughs> exactly. It's a physical. I'm hey, we'll an audience. I'll drive, we'll also drive hours you hours to come get you. And we'll drive you to other locations, too. We can You can look us up on Uber or Lyft. You know, I think we should just start our own cross-country tour. Uh, and I be like the this. podcast that is going to every state in the union to talk about Star Wars. That would get that us would some actually, buzz. That would get us some interest. I, I kind of back like in the that. days of, and I know it still exists, probably as an entity. But Uber Pool doesn't seem as attractive anymore oh, as yeah. it once did. <laughs> oh wow! Um, yeah, that's done. So back in the days of Uber Pool, I was actually coming. I was, I was uh, hanging out at Chris's old apartment. Not that, not that anyone. No. But it was like oh. two in the morning, and I was taking an Uber pool because I was trying to save five dollars and cost myself four <laughs> hours. Um, and uh, very young people were in the car, and they were they they had asked the person for the auxiliary cable, and they were blasting music. And I'm thinking now that I should have asked for the auxiliary cable mm. and played some of the Droids Pod. Wow, that's, well, that's an a, opportunity in, that's a, a in an thing. Uber pool. Play your own podcast. You get know some what? fans. Droids Pod Challenge. If you happen to find yourself in an Uber that has an uh, auxiliary cable, play a little droids pod. Yeah, and then <laughs> video it and yeah. send it to everybody at lucasfilm.com. <laughs> <laughs> Say, look it, even the Uber drivers are playing this podcast. <laughs> See, but you gave me an idea, and a genuine one, but I'll never do it, is the uber pool interview podcast, where you're just oh. in an Uber uber pool, and whoever gets wow. in the car, you interview. Oh. That's a wow, great twenty. That that's is... a great twenty seventeen idea, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's really wow. good. Oh, that's really wow, good. Wow, Mike. <laughs> Come on. Maybe we can monetize just the fact that you said that idea. Yeah. We could just I'm maybe we can do a, a Ber- Berenstain Berenstain Bears. You know what? You, are you listening, Ira Glass? Don't try and steal it. Hey. <laughs> Don't try and steal it. This American Uber Sarah Koenig. 
don't, Ira Glass. Don't drag who are some my other mentors podcast like that, people. Please. <laughs> are they um, producers of this? Who produces this thing? Um, Mike Birbiglia produces. It's this. good. <laughs> it's good to be back, guys. I think um, talking the about podcast Star Wars. Yes, exactly. Was Star Wars. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you know, we've not given you a lot of reasons for the audience, but I do have to say, stay yeah. with us. Stay with us. There's some big... Hey, we're covering the end of The Light of the Jedi today. Stick <laughs> with it. At the end of the show, we will definitely be talking yeah. about the last chapters of The Light of the Jedi. <laughs> and if we don't get to it, we don't get to it. We'll yeah. do it next time. Oh, boy. <laughs> Special guest, Matt Damon. <laughs> well, I will say, of course, follow us everywhere. You know the drill. Droids Pod, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Droids Pod, DroidsPod at gmail.com. After hi- our hiatus, we're not going to tell you about the playthrough of Fallen Order. After this time, <laughs> done. That was it. That was the last one. There'll be no more mentions of the YouTube playthrough of Fallen Order. After that one. Chris and I are back on Twitch, too. Yes. Should be said. Um promo it promo uh last week we had a triumphant comeback we said that we'd be back this week we are now recording at the time that we said we would be on twitch so that's clearly not happening (laughs) but we will be back we are what are we doing chris we're doing run throughs of hades yeah we're playing hades what hightailing through hades is what we called it that's Um, right so uh uh, if you're familiar with the game hades we we're just playing it it's a it's a it's a rogue light we're not good enough at video games for you to care. If you if you like us, come watch us on Twitch. Yeah. If you don't like us as personalities, you won't like the show. The yeah, Hades won't be the thing. If you've that made gets it this, if you made it this far in the pod, you're like, I can't stand these guys. You're not going to like this at all. If you've been in an Uber pool with me, you know what you're getting into. <laughs> it would be funny if you just put on the Cantina theme in an Uber pool. <laughs> yeah, the the music that was playing that night was it, it was good music. It was Beyonce, and I like Beyonce, yeah. but it was so loud. Like it was yeah. so loud. Like the the kind of loud that only you know twenty two year olds at two a.m. are okay with. <laughs> exactly. They were they were it's heading they can, somewhere. I was they coming can back. Yeah, you know? and we had just probably just watched Star Wars or something like. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, truly, I'm almost positive. <laughs> yeah. that's what we were doing. Yes, it was probably given the, the Force Awakens. Well, yeah. on any given night, you can basically assume one of us is watching Star Wars. Yeah. yeah but Chris used to host night. He did, like, sketches. This is real. <laughs> he yeah. did sketches beforehand and stuff. Kind of was, the he ramp, really made a night of it. The ramp up to The Force Awakens, we had the six months of Star Wars. Right. And, mm. and we were all in a state of what could only be described as mania. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ryan was just trying to stay alive. Um, and we... <laughs> <laughs> we would do like little bits and, and preambles before each each episode. I think we bring it back though before twenty twenty three. Well, yeah. I think Chris, you can't bring it back until there's another saga film, right? That's, yes, that's, that's that's you have to wait for the new version of the saga, which those are the will steps, not be the yeah. Skywalker saga anymore, but will be whatever well, the new saga mm, is. There's a good. I will say that one of the sketches Chris <laughs> Chris made like was like a video, and I watch it twice a year. Which one is that? Oh, it's Star the Wars. Star guy. Wars guy. Yeah, it's oh, fantastic. Where you say you know? if someone says uh, they haven't seen Star Wars after I had my heart attack, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's truly funny. You know what? I make Let's... Nicole like I'm like watch this. Come on, and she's like I know Chris is funny. Like he's like I know him personally, and I'm like you gotta watch this. Guy. <laughs> I'm out of body in that. We'll, we'll throw that up on the Droids Pod uh, YouTube. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> There we and, go. And overshadow my Fallen Order playthrough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Exactly. Don't forget to watch Chris's uh, sketch that he did five years ago. That's um, it. That's, that's the um, new one. That's the new tag every episode. There it is. Have there it is. Have you guys hit record yet? Well, much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole, for watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's dive into the, the yeah. news of the day. Let's be a little topical. And, and you know what? It's not Star Wars news, but it's Lucasfilm news, and it's Harrison Ford news, which when is Harrison Ford news not in some way tangentially also Star Wars news? We know sure. he's not going to be in another Star Wars. That's that's pretty much over. I mean, he could come back as another ghost, I guess, you know, if J.J. <laughs> yeah. Abrams gets another movie ever. Uh, but, you know, Harrison Ford was injured. His shoulder has been hurt on the set of Indiana Jones 5. There was leaked... Um, 
And before we get into the discussion of the injury, but there's been leaked photos from the set. And we will be discussing it in depth. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Got we have our, we got our hands on the x-rays. We got our hands on the scans. <laughs> We've got a guy on the inside. We're like Rachel Maddow with the tax returns. We got it, baby. We don't we have anything it. else we do in our lives. We just try to go and dig through the garbage around movie sets. and find Listen, when I, get, when I see my own x-rays, I know better than the doctor, and this is no different. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to bring up, James Mangold is directing... Uh, which I'm thrilled about. I can't wait to see what he does with Indiana More Jones. We're like James Mangold, Harrison oh, Ford's shoulder. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I can't even wow. get into this. I can't even get to the Yikes. part of the beginning I'm of the sorry, discussion. I'm sorry, were you headed to that joke too? Yes, I was. That was, <laughs> that I was step on yeah, you? I, I've been waiting on that one for a while. Yikes. Uh, but the, the online community, you know, as it is, as it does, uh, Mangold posted, or he didn't post the photos, but the photos leaked, and then they started saying, "Oh, you know how I know this is going to be a terrible movie? Steven Spielberg isn't directing. Harrison Ford is seventy-eight years old. Um, Kathleen Kennedy's involved. And look at this photo. You know, this is a disaster." And Mangold makes he just took down a lot of people who the movie's a one week into production, no one knows anything about this script. Oh, and I think the other note was that um, uh, what um, John uh, Kasdan. Who, who mm-hmm. worked Lawrence Kasdan's son, yeah. who wrote right. Solo, was writing it, which isn't the case anymore, but you know everybody makes their own assumptions on what's going sure. on with these movies. And so they, they just immediately were trying to downgrade any movie, which is what you expect from the internet. But Mangold came out and he was just you know, lashing into these people and, and mm-hmm. taking them down a peg, which I appreciate because how can you do anything when you have no idea what this is in the right. movie's one weekend? He's just calling yeah. it Also, as I a, trust all these production. people were cre- Kingdom of the Crystal Skull apologists. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. Since they're, they love the old Lucasfilm so much and Steven Spielberg directed yes. it. And I'm saying this, I'm saying this as a Kingdom of the Crystal Skull apologist. Which wait, you are? I yeah, I didn't I, I didn't uh I didn't take issue with James Mangold in any way here. So I'm not saying that but like, yeah, sure. Here's the thing about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. No, it's not the best Indiana Jones movie. Of course it's not. It's not even that good of a movie. However, okay. there is stuff in it that is like genuinely like really good. Why well, is the first motorcycle 45, chase in it? The first forty five minutes are <clears throat> first forty five minutes are a good movie. Yeah, and like I know that we like okay, so this is like I'm waiting in the t- obviously we know that he's a a creep now. People always go went after the Shia LaBeouf performance, and I never understood like what was like what they found so awful about it. I think they found yeah. just because he was swinging with monkeys. I think people I, just saw that visually. Say, that's not his thing. fault. That's not his fault. I at all. usually tap I mean, out now we the know that he's a creep. Like it's, it, it's long, his fault that he's a yeah. that he's a bad abusive person. But it's, it's a, not it's his a fault. Long, it, <laughs> it's a long movie. Um, <laughs> I usually tap out at the monkeys, but. <laughs> I agree. You know what, Ryan? I'm going to follow your lead here. I think you you've shown us the light of the prequels. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not going. I, I'm not swinging as far for Kingdom of the Crystals. So okay, that's why I was right. You're not swinging yeah. as far on that vine. Yeah, it's a weird no. movie. And also during that whole time, like Spielberg was very clear to say, like this is George's idea. Yeah. Like every interview, it came yeah, up. Yeah, like it's like a world <laughs> in a world where that movie could exist or not exist. I'm like, yeah, yeah. sure, it's funny. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, get, like, what do I care? You got to see his old buddy become a traitor. It's fine. But it's to go, a trip. To go Ray Winst- Winstone's wearing a neckerchief, and he's a triple agent. Are you joking? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Kate but, Blanchett? She's in it? Kate yeah, Blanchett's in How it. are you getting hurt? She's not doing that for free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might be the Kate Blanchett performance that I remember the least, other than just the I, accent. Yes. I literally forgot she was in the movie until this moment in time. <laughs> remember the line where he's like, I like Ike. <laughs> <laughs> the movie's wild they don't play the wild. theme enough it is wild. i will say that they don't play the theme enough i have it was not a lost it was re- a lost time for blockbusters i think <laughs> movies did not know where to go we had star wars ended lord of the, lord of the rings ended no one really knew what was up avatar was that, was just that, came out was that like was that the year before or the year of iron man it might have been the year year of wasn't it? year of so like two months before Iron Man came out, that yeah. came out. Yeah. Listen, no one, no one knew. Wait, did two thousand eight? Do I think have... they should be making an Indiana Jones five? No, not really. <laughs> Do I think it'll be good? Probably not. I actually Do, think it will be. I think Matt Gold is going to make it good. It's like, listen, he's seventy eight. He's seventy eight. <laughs> he's seventy eight. Like what? Like what? Uh, 
What, how much blood are we going to milk? Hey, this dude hey. keeps breaking legs and like, <laughs> yeah. It's oh yeah, do we even get? To, do we even get to the story? Did we even get to the story? He hurt his shoulder. He said he hurt his shoulder on the side. Yeah, he hurt his shoulder. Yeah. Um. Also, yeah. I mean, every movie. I think. I think he. I. I don't. I think he's just like he's prone to injury. It seems. Well, when you're <laughs> like, 78, like, you're prone to injury. If I mean, you're just trying even to get for, out there throughout his things. whole career, right? I feel like he's he's always um, kind of injuring himself. He, he's taken he? he's taken chances. Here's what I respect about him, and maybe he's like really like um, maybe he's really charged by like he loves being on set and stuff. But sure. it doesn't it certainly doesn't seem so. <laughs> his, his character. It, it seems yeah. like he's like listen, I've I've now taken care of my great grandkids. Maybe if I do another movie, I could take care of their grandkids. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's at the end of his life. He's getting like 20 million a picture. Like maybe he's just like, yeah, like it'd be selfish for me not to for future <laughs> generations of Fords. Yeah. It's like, hey, I can spend three months. Wait, by the way, <laughs> how many kids does he have? I don't know. Because he doesn't have any kids with Callista Flockhart, does he? He he has like adopted kids with, like, uh, like he adopted her. Like I think she had kids coming in. Because my impression would kids. just be like whoever the twenty-year-old Harrison Ford's son would be that was actually born of his genes, we'd be seeing TikToks or Instagrams yeah. of him everywhere. Or he should. I be think acting. his son is probably. <laughs> not, I think his son's probably in his forties because he's seventy-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but does he have a? a, a he a he genealogical does. He has son, a son. He, he owns a, like a okay. Ford's like like uh ford's waist it's like a airport restaurant oh really okay yeah whoa droids pod field trip <laughs> let's do yeah, it we're gonna call from the <laughs> the droids are calling in from newark yeah hey but i do want to say i think that i'm very excited about this because i am a very big james mangold fan now. yeah and i like james mangold a lot i think yeah. that you know ford and ferrari is classic movie making and it is heart racing. It knows exactly what notes to play. And it does it in a way that is not, I mean, it's not totally expected. It doesn't feel overwrought. It doesn't feel redone. You know, it's it's his own. And I'm excited, you know, and I lo- really enjoyed Logan too. So there's a clear precedent okay. for okay. what he can do with an older character. Not nearly, you know, that, that was in 78 with Hugh Jackman, yeah. but... I think that they yeah. can they can do this in a way like what let's just oh let's God. envision could you yeah. imagine the if father like, <laughs> I hope this doesn't end like Logan could you imagine if a clone Harrison a clone Indiana Jones kills Sala in his sleep <laughs> <laughs> that'd be wild I looked this hey, up yeah. both of his both of his sons were born in the sixties <laughs> all right there you go. Wow, I, I I didn't I wasn't aware. I'm just still surprised there's not yeah. more media out there about his. Yeah, sons. that's because they're also old. <laughs> yeah, but like back in the '90s, where was the Harrison Ford son stuff? One it says one is a restaurant tour and the other is a clothier. 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 Hmm. What's that mean? I think a cloth a cloth a cloth man. No man, man in the cloth. cloth. Yeah. Ford's filling station, a gastro pub with locations at LA Live in Los Angeles and Terminal Five at LAX. Really? <laughs> That's what it says. I guess the plane theme is all there. That's good. Yeah, I think Terminal Five might be the JetBlue terminal at LAX. That's nice. All right. Well, next time, next and time there you we're go. That's a free plug, Harry. Come on. <laughs> Come on the show. Come on the, Come on the show. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about some actual Star Wars news. Leslie Headland, uh, showrunner of Acolyte, which were, I think might be the most anticipated of the upcoming series. Not that we're not excited about Lando or, you know, Ahsoka. I, I mean, very yeah, excited about Ahsoka. Yeah, I think Ahsoka, Ahsoka might be mine, but Acolyte, Acolyte's a big question mark, yeah. so that's the most exciting thing about it. She also, it seems like, because we only know the showrunners for, what, three of the shows at this point? Yeah. Or, or we don't know a few of them. I guess mm-hmm. I guess they do. We do know the showrunner for Lando, um, and I'm I'm blanking on his name at the moment. But I know didn't he work on Dear White People uh, previously? Um, uh, is it is it? Uh, let me look up. Yeah, but I know. I think that from Russian Doll, from what she's done before, yeah. I'm just very excited at the prospect of of what could be. And then you read this interview from the AV Club, 
that just recently came out and go find it. It's called Leslie Hetland's favorite Star Wars is the Star Wars you make your own. And, you know, it's all about her history with Star Wars and how she became a fan. And that almost had a lapse period the way a lot of us did before really getting into it again. But, you know, her time growing up was writing fan fiction in a way. And her level of detail, you know, she's clearly a fan and not, you know, the J.J. Abrams type fan where, you know, Star Wars is a movie, I guess, but not anything more than that to J.J. Uh, He, she has so much... So many touchstones, so many moments throughout her life where she's had different parts of the canon mean something to her. And it's just very cool to read through that and then also read through some of the conversations he talks about in the writer's room. It's it's really interesting. I think think it's interesting. There There are these different levels of fandom in Star Wars where it's like there's these fans that loved Star Wars when it was popular, and I'm not... Uh, disregarding that by any means and like it was important to them and it's important to a lot of people but then with Star Wars there are peaks and troughs where it's like in the zeitgeist and out of the zeitgeist and I think those moments when it's out of the zeitgeist is like when it's really hard for it to be popular and it's really hard for like uh, pop culture to like and it all becomes almost becomes like the butt of the joke and so then that's when you have things like these kind of uh, uh, the the expanded universe and and the novels and things like that, people that really liked it, they hung on to it and they found like mm-hmm. they found that to be their happy place. And I feel like she might be coming out of that kind of that yeah. wave of, of fandom where it's kind of like Star Wars wasn't a cool thing to like maybe at that time. Like it was kind of wrapping up and, and in that that little dark period from like 84 to mm. uh, 99, basically. Yeah. Um, to follow up, it, Mike, you're right. It is Justin Simeon who was working on Lando, yeah. who okay. made the right people, who's great. Um, and it's interesting what you're saying, Chris, because it's those times in Star Wars, and it's like this is kind of what will be. And I don't want to like romanticize this, but it's like it, now that they're taking a break from the movies and stuff for a little bit, it, it could be a good thing. It, it's those times in Star Wars, those dry spells are actually more like opportunities to actually have to like work for it and when i say work for it it means that like because there's not just uh obvious content being thrown at you you Mm -hmm. get the opportunity to look into like the stuff that's kind of under the surface a little bit whether it's extended universe stuff or maybe uh you know some of the books that you haven't read before the comics or things like that just because you there's an itch you want to scratch um and it's like i look back very fondly on those times in like the the early 90s before the special editions and the prequels where it's like it was just a thing you liked and it was just like you would take anything right yep and it's like that's where you get like weird stuff like yes finding out the like salacious crumbs background and things like that you know (laughs) exactly i think that's to me where you dive into some of those um you know, what are the books by Pablo Hidalgo, Chris, that you always have? It's like the, not the history of Star Wars, but the actual, like, deconstruction oh, yeah. of everything. Yes, the, the, uh, the like, the encyclopedia. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. those various the visual, encyclop- dic- the visual yeah. dictionary and then, like, the art of books and those things. Like, yeah, the, yeah, those come out of that where it's like, hey, we saw all these items on screen. Like, what if these all had names? What if all yeah. of these things yeah. had a story? And when you're starved for something new and you're starved for, you know, still living in that world, I always felt like I I just vividly remember buying one of those gigantic Star Wars making of behind the scenes Mm -hmm. books that is still at my parents' house that must be, I don't know, at least two feet long and, (laughs) you know, a foot and a half wide and it weighs a metric ton. Those I, I like those were the things I wanted under the Christmas tree. I, I would ask for that and then I would pour over it for days, looking through every page, reading every bit of it. And it it expanded my knowledge of Star Wars, expanded my knowledge of film, and made me, you know, really as you I think you talked about Ryan, you kinda work for it, which is great. Yeah, and like it just I, I mean I have huge, like fond memories of reading the Young Jedi Knight books because it was just like it it expanded the world so much and you know i was obviously young i I, they and they were written for young people so you know that's convenient but it's just um to know that there's someone in charge of a star wars show one that's just like a really interesting artist that's made cool stuff like i like leslie headland stuff a lot but beyond that 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 clearly um it, it like also embraces that aspect of it um is great it's i mean that's like a wonderful thing it's like there's a 
there's going to be an age of people making Star Wars as like younger people, as it's not just like people who were like the first movie I saw in 1970, right. so, you know, which is great. But it, there's going to be people that are like, yeah, I watched it on the VHS tape, and then there was 10 years where there was just nothing new. Right. You know? Yeah. And it, like, and people that do love the prequels. <laughs> well, that was, she does <laughs> mention that, like, I think initially she didn't, wasn't a fan of the prequels, but then as she's ex- been exposed to more of the writing and some of the videos that you can find on the internet now about Star Wars. Maybe a podcast. Maybe Do you think she she ever came across our podcast? I think she has. I think she has. You know, there's, there's a couple of podcasts where you find out that actors or actresses or directors have been listening to them for a while. And I think ours is one of those. I mean, yeah, I think so. I think she's in the running to win the R2D2. Oh, let's get it to her. (laughs) I mean, I would think that Lucasfilm might be able to hook her up, but yeah, droids will make yeah. it happen but she's got it i like the quote that she had where it's to me star wars has always been like a little bit of a rorschach test of a piece of art a lot of times it is what you decide it is which is true and she goes in a little bit more and she kind of makes a comparison to the matrix um mm-hmm. but i i think that's it is true because as much as sometimes and we've seen it in in sort of the fracturing as well of a fandom is people do see what they want to see within it right. and it is amazing that you can create a piece of art and usually a piece of art that is based on myth the way that Star Wars is, it allows it to be interpreted the way people for good and for bad would interpret it themselves. And and there's something to be said that like it is trying to teach this moral without being so specific, but clearly some people need more specificity. I don't mm. know, that, that, that I'm almost arguing against my own point, but it just, it, sure. it's, it's interesting that I do, I look at it as like, Oh, now all all the tests in terms of Star Wars is if I talk to someone and they're immediately saying that, you know, the casting of The Last Jedi was horrendous and well that Kelly Marie Tran didn't belong, I'm like, oh, all right, well there's that that made it pretty clear to me. I'm I'm out. I, I wonder if that will I mean, for me for me. I, like it will become a bit of it's it's different than the prequels because like the prequels had like different things going on and there i feel like with the prequels there were less like bad faith arguments being made yeah. it was just generally people being like the acting's bad and it's like i can't argue with that yeah um but i do wonder if going forward like when i used to meet i'll be honest when i'd meet a star wars fan that would write off the prequels completely i'd be like oh boy you know what I mean? Like, it'd be like, well, we're not going to have that much to talk about, I guess, yeah. when it comes to Star Wars. Right. Because it's like, like, not because, and I'm not gatekeeping. It means whatever it means to everybody. But it's like, if you really want to get into it and someone writes off a half of the mythology of it, essentially. Well, they're gatekeeping. You know, you're not. They yeah. We're, I get, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, you're my friend, so you'd say that. But, <laughs> it, it, you know, if someone's going to. You could disagree with the with the midichlorians thing, like as a choice, which right? I do. Fine, but it's like it, it is like in the movies, so yeah. it's like to to not engage with it. I think yeah. is like missing out on something. And I don't even mean engage with it, being like this is what it is, and like that's. I guess I need to like it. I just mean like debating it or whatever. Right. You, you know, can't just it's write like because it I yeah. I don't love the the. You know what? I know I'm not. I don't mind the midichlorians thing at all. I I mean I'm sure I have like a head cannon thing that like explains it away, but that's also a part of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Um, but sure. like I don't think that it. I don't think that um the the force. A lot of people's argument. I mean we're getting in the weeds now, but a lot of people's <laughs> argument was that the midichlorians made took the spirituality out of the force and the mystery out of the force. Which... I don't think they're mu- mutually exclusive. No. Um, but but if someone was like i don't like the prequels they're stupid they're not star wars to me it's like okay well then uh we i mean we could keep talking about the three movies i guess like that's right. fine it's well, the same thing the, the way that people are all the time the same way that people are now disregarding the sequels or saying the disney star wars and and you know not yeah. acknowledging them yeah i just like i i don't i don't know i i think i've always like been like you kind of have to like take the whole thing yeah yeah and, like exactly. why wouldn't you yeah i mean like it's, it's like i don't disregard the the rise of skywalker as like part of the story i don't like it i don't like a lot of the choices that were made but like it's still there right yeah it's it's still part of it and that's it's it's how the thing ended uh (laughs) it's it's there i i agree i think i think it's hard to accept when the thing's just like i think there's just such anticipation built on all of this stuff even like we were talking about indiana jones previous previously it's like 
to pull yourself away from that and just realize like well this is this is it because this is what has been laid down if you don't like that then like it's it's fine but you can't like just completely write it out of the conversation because it has meaning to other people like it mm-hmm. has it has influence so like i never i i think i i was never like i was never a, the biggest fan of the prequels but i was never like a this is this sucks like i watched them countless times before speaking with you ryan and <laughs> uh <laughs> and i'll watch them countless times after but i think like at one point my brother and i were watching it and like when uh Obi Wan in in Star Wars, some people call it A New Hope, says something like, and then Han Solo is like, "Oh, you like crazy old fool." And then I, there was a moment where my brother was like, "It's like wow, like think all the stuff that Obi Wan saw with like slicing his friend, his best friend's legs <laughs> off and standing in front of a volcano, and now here's Han Solo." I think like at that moment, kind of a lot of things clicked where it was like, "Oh, this is really cool. This is adding something." to that and that if you let that in like this has really layered all of these movies and i think we'll see the same with the prequel trilogy and and to the most extent we have and i know there's a lot of choices we disagree with and don't like but i think it all kind of is the sum of its parts and i think it's like imagine someone you didn't like came to a party and like you and after that you just claimed they weren't there yeah exactly (laughs) exactly it's like they made a scene they like they dropped a drink they blah 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 and you were like i don't know what you're talking about that person was not at the party Yeah, yeah but see that's the thing though if a person came to the party and took certain people out of the party and put them in a closet and said that they couldn't be a part of the party i'd then want to ignore that person well you'd want it but you you but you wouldn't claim that they like weren't there no i yeah you would talk about the fact that you really hated that they put all those people <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly you know what I mean? and maybe they could do something <laughs> to fix it yeah well exactly. but that's I, I guess my my point is that like you know i have a hard time thinking of the rise of skywalker in that way but you are right you do need to accept it as this is what the story is but i don't know i i just you know there's i don't even need i don't even mean like accept it i just mean like engage with it like it's just like engage with the parts of the of the uh the canon that you like disagree with because it's like yeah, don't just dismiss Half it the fun is like fighting over this stuff. Yeah, like, exactly. You know what I mean? Well, exactly. Exactly. We have such a limited amount yeah. of actual source material. We might as well just <laughs> go all in on it, right? So are you saying we're all watching The Rise of Skywalker again soon? Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Wait. There's stuff to like in that movie. You mean Palpatine? He's alive? <laughs> Somehow. 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 The guy I never heard of. <laughs> well, the other things that we did, uh, Matt mentioned about that, that interview, um, she was really, it's great because she talks a bit about, you know, being from the LGBTQ community and also representing LGBTQ fans and also having a very diverse writer's room on the show. And I think it's great. The first thing that she talks about is the interview that Mark Hamill gave. And, you know, we have some jokes for Hamill and some of the things that he said during different press tours and attention that he gets. But I, I think that um, his quote that he did in that video was like, look, if Luke Skywalker is gay to you, then of course he's gay. And I, I always thought that was really pretty incredible and beautiful that he did that because there's not yeah. many actors who would come out and make that kind of statement. And, of course, having the years of being Luke Skywalker, you know, a legend, but having been Mark Hamill for so long, there's not exactly anything he can say anymore that's going to hurt his career. But it's just it was a pretty incredible thing that he did that and said yeah. that. And yeah. then that means and so he- much to a lot of people. His, like, we make fun of his hamminess and stuff, but it all does, like, come from this point that, like, he does, like, deeply care about this stuff. Yeah. But you he know, and, like, he's a deeply it, caring person. Like, he is yeah, out I mean, there like, advocating that thing, for, for it, you know, good. Yeah, he's always he's always speaking out, like, against, like, hatred and things like that. He's, like, he had that great tweet the other day about that, that kid who was terminally oh, yeah, ill that I he went that. to go meet. Like, it's, like, he clearly is a person who, like, has this huge heart and stuff like that. So, like... Yeah, we make fun of like stuff that he says on press tours. He's a little hammy, but it's like <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, he's yeah. in that positive for the world. Yes, yeah, he's a positive um, force. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But it's she talks a little bit more about, you know, they're even talking about like favorite characters. It was almost a, a break into the writer's room. And um, she shared her favorite character. And 
you know, the whole writer's room was like, well, yeah, you're, you're gay. So that's because you're gay. And she's like, well, yeah, that's true. And it speaks to me. And so representation and, and hopefully maybe we see some representation in star Wars other than a tacked on kiss at the end of the movie that didn't mean anything for characters who weren't actually in the forefront of the story. Or other than like a thing where they're like, actually we wrote a scene where this <laughs> person was explicitly like gay. And yeah. then it right. got cut out, but like, you should know that that scene and conversation existed. And it's like, Put it in then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's like yeah. that. That is like, and I think they really need to work on that. Like, I think overall, like media and like stuff, like you know, all of these corporations. But like, they need to like address the fact that it is a complete cop out to claim that you thought about yes. or shot a scene yes. where yes, where there was representation present, but like it just didn't work for the story. That's literally it's the like stop base. It. That's like the base minimum they could do. <laughs> think about it it's like, like offering someone yeah. to help them move after they've moved already yes <laughs> oh i would have helped you it's and by like, the way it, by the way i'm sorry ryan <laughs> i would have done it, it it's just i, I really hope that that changes yeah. i really hope it changes in star wars it's like yeah. like if you you know go if you want to be representative go all in on the representation and it's like obviously and it could work in the world yeah. it's not like a thing where it's like people don't it, like have romance in star wars yeah, like exactly. like stop yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, that's not how it was back then that's the, <laughs> the we always oh. talk about, we talk game, about of, that with game of thrones game of thrones <laughs> where it's like people are like that's how just how, that's how women were treated back then we're like well, back when it's, it's a fictional <laughs> story this, dragons, this is rides dude. Bit. yeah exactly exactly thank you thank you for the credit yeah, that yeah, is a yeah. thing though i did hear yeah. someone say like that's how that's how it was back then and I was like, what? <laughs> I, to go back to our conversation about the debate that continues and rages on for Star Wars and some of the things, that's the one thing, and I even tweeted about it today. Game of Thrones, you know, the debate doesn't continue. We all just sort of said that was it and it was over and let's yeah. not talk about it again. And I yeah. loved Game of Thrones, but, you know, it's not it's everlasting. Kinda, yeah, I mean, it, I think in a world that they've created, that George Lucas has created of of literally limitless technical... Uh, theological and 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 just infinite possibilities of of a world that you can create. We need to see these kind of stories in it. It the the foundation yes. of an environment is there. Like there's no there's no excuse not to put this stuff in this world yeah. where literally almost he's made a, a a playground where anything is possible. So why we have to see these type, types of stories be played out in this in this world because. There's no excuse not to, really. Also, like, he he wrote, a, he created a story that takes place in a world where there is, like, an ancient religion that has been wiped from the earth. There is a government, a, a, a fa- fascistic government masquerading as a democracy that has also been overthrown from the inside and a war being waged on the civilians that a rebellion is rising up against. And people thought it would never say anything that anyone disagreed with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's not to say like it can play on modern times. It can push the buttons. It, it should. Which is, I mean, I think Leslie Headland even had a point about, you know, war is political. This star Wars has always been political and anybody who says it's not political is what are you watching? Yeah, what, that's what, what I said. What is she <laughs> listening to the podcast? Wait, She's listening to the podcast. She should be listening she to the podcast. She's Let- got four guys who would like to talk about it. <laughs> Last thing I, I wanted to say about the interview is that she talks about how uh, she really got into the Star Wars RPGs. And it's interesting because they she doesn't mention one specifically, but mm-hmm. she mentions she how that at 14... Playthrough? Well, yeah, it must be. At 14 years old, it could have like changed her life if she would have been yeah. playing that at that time. Let's- she has to be talking about Kotar. I just... well. This well, that no, th- I mean, there's actually a lot of live action role playing. Not live, not large. Yeah, she might be talking about like actual like, the, like there, pen and there's paper. A, yeah, there's. Well, an she said she and, says it's a role playing. Well, there is a pen so. and paper role playing oh, yeah. game that I know like D and D. Yeah, like a D and D kind of based system that I know a lot of fans that have been actually playing it. Oh, droids uh, live are going to play this. This is happening w- on droids. Right? I would love to. This I I, I feel like I may to. have referenced this on the pod again, but there was that, that we'll call it the dark times. Um, post uh, Return of the Jedi and up to the kind of the, the re-ramp of the re-releases, there was this time where there was like these two people that were just basically like, we want to make a Star Wars RPG. And they're like, well, we need content. So they go through the movies and like look at all the items and stuff. And one of the most famous examples is Med Pack, which uh-huh. is, like, is now like vernacular and video games and stuff like that. 
But they would literally just make a list of images and names and, and theories of what this thing was, and then they would send it to George Lucas at the time. They had license to Star Wars through the company. And George Lucas would just like yes and no all this stuff. Hmm. And it became this RPG. So like a lot Is of Is that this... why I, when in it was a big deal in The Last Jedi when Finn said like get a med pack? Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh man, that's cool. Yeah. So it was like these these I think it was like two two people that basically came up with like the 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 bulk of the vernacular of Star Wars because they were just obsessive fans and like we want to make an RPG out of this and then hmm. they went back through the movies looking for items and things they could grab out and so I think if 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 she was playing if Leslie Heather was playing this RPG I think I've heard from a few other people friends a little bit older than me that have played this game that they're like oh no that's that's Star Wars to me like that's where it all comes from because like it's such an enriched universe of, of just like these little things where anything can happen. I think you must be right though. Cause reading this again, she says, Oh, you know, you create your own characters, you go on these campaigns and most of the time it depends on who's running the game. I've had some mean people, yeah. but most of the time it's pretty friendly. So it, it is, you're right. It must be along those lines. That's cool. We should do that. I let's do it. Wow. Let, how do let's we, do how a, do we get started? Chris, let's get us do going. A Twitch live Twitch. Why not? All right. I'm in. All right, we gotta look forward to you know that what? coming up on the droids. Yeah. We can't top that. We're gonna have to push the chapters. Yeah, <laughs> I, we're just you know we ran out of time. I don't we're know not getting we to do. the light of the Jedi, and this is this is no disrespect to light of the Jedi. It is the only book I've read in the last six months, and it is a great book. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal to be back together i i, I this is it's, just this is so good such a pleasure and you know we're gonna have more and more to talk about because each week there's just some new news that we've got and hey we're gonna finish light of the jedi because in one week's time there will be a new book for Ooh. the high republic rising How storm about it? by kevin scott so hey. you know we're gonna have to get in those final chapters before next week hey we are all the nihil <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We are. Oh my God! <laughs> oh wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh second. no, Chris. Who is, wait, who wait, he, wait. Who is he relating to? Oh no. Oh no. Well, that is going to do it for the droids you're looking for a Star Wars podcast. We will be back next week. Back into our regular flow of things. You will find us here next week, and uh, can't wait to talk more Star Wars with all of you. What they throw? Annie. And Dave, the force is with you, always. <laughs>